Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 89. Day Day 3089, 3 is to signify that we are in the 3rd edition, 3rd edition, day 89, we are on page number 297, and today we'll discuss what is known as standard deviation, as to how, how to go about calculating it. Standard deviation, as we already discussed yesterday, is a, is, a, is a measurement of dispersion. It tells you how widespread the data is, how far away the, from the mean the observations lie. Is, is, are the two widespread? Is there, are there, is, there a greater, is, there a, is, is there a great deal of disparity between the low observations and the high observation? Or are they all very much clustered together around the mean and the disparity between the low score, if you think in terms of score if you like, the low observation and the high observation is not as great. That's what it tells us. It involves very it involves five very simple steps. You just have to know the steps and you can calculate the standard deviation. In the exam, they will probably give you four or five or six at the most, maybe, observation and they will ask you to calculate the standard deviation. That's all it is. They're not going to give it 20, 10 or 20 because uh, it will take, take you forever. And there it is. This is the sort of exact problem that we're talking about. Turn to page number 297, example 4.2.8. There we are given five observations and we are being asked to calculate the standard deviation. Calculate the standard deviation of these five observations. Step number one. So let's get going. There are five steps. Step number one, we have to calculate the mean. Step number one is to calculate, calculate the mean. And I have done so already. Step number one is to calculate the mean. And we have done, I have done so already ahead of time, which is 7, which you can very clearly see here. 10 plus 10 is 20, and 7 plus 8 is 15. 15 plus 20 is 35. 35 divided by, 35 divided by 5 is 7. That's what you mean. That's the first step. Next step, calculate the deviations from the mean. So now we have to calculate the de how much each observation deviates from the mean. So here we go. Here are the observations. X with subscript I indicates nth observation, or subscript N if you like. First observation is 0, then we have a 7, then we have an 8, then we have a 10 and a 10. There we go. Those are the observations. Now let's calculate the deviations, which is simply the x minus x bar, xn, the given. In other words, first observation minus the mean, second observation minus the mean, and so on and so forth. First observation is 0, 0 minus 7, which is the, which is the mean, 0 minus 7 is going to give us negative 7. Then we will have 0. 8 minus 7 is going to give us 1, and then the 3 and the 3. There you go. These are the deviations. This deviation that we just calculated, the given observation minus the mean, is typically, usually, represented with a small x. And many a book, many a book will refer to this, this symbol simply as curly x. So in case you hear or read in the book curly x, I don't want you to wonder what it is. Curly x is simply the deviation from the mean. And that's what we just calculated. So let's replace that with the curly x. Second step, we have to square the deviation. So let's do to square, square them. Square the deviation right here. Negative 7 squared is going to become 49. 0 squared is just a 0. 1 squared is just 1. 3 squared is going to be 9. And a 9. Voila. Fourth step. We have to figure out the mean of the squared of deviations. Calculate the mean, in other words, average of these numbers, mean of the squared deviations. Before we actually do that, Let's pause for a second and let's ask ourselves a simple question. Why are we doing all this thing? Well, we want to find out. We want to get some sense. We want to find out. We want to get some sense of how much these observations deviate from the mean. That's what standard deviation is going to tell us. How far apart are, are, are these observations? Are they too far apart from the mean or are they all clustered together? 
Well, if that's the idea, if that's what you're looking for, you're trying to get some sense as to how far apart these observations are from the mean, then the first question that comes to mind is that, why go through all this trouble? Why not simply add up all the deviations? Why not simply add up all the deviations from the mean and take the average of these numbers? Take the average of these deviations. And that will give us the average deviation. Isn't that what you're looking for? You're, looking, you're, you're trying to get some idea as to how much they deviate from the mean. Well, take the average deviation. Simple enough. That's what average means. It gives you some idea as to how much they deviate. Why not do that? Well, why not do that? Answer to that question is right in front of us. Answer to that question is right in front of us, which is, which is, watch what happens. If we were to add up, if, if we were to simply take the average of these deviations, if we were to simply take the average of these, in other words, if you wanted to simply add up all the deviations divided by the number of observations, we could do that. But sometimes we run into situations like this. What is the seven? Negative seven, a three, a, a one, a three, and a three. The sum of the deviation here is zero. The sum of the deviation being zero gives the impression that there are no deviations at all. All the observations are seven. If the mean is seven, if the mean is 7 and all the observations are 7 and nothing else, then in that case, the proper way that we're going to do is going to tell us that the deviation, standard deviation is 0. But here you can clearly see, this tells us that the average deviation is 0. It says on average, on average, everything is around 7. That's what this tells us. It says on average, all the observations are around 7. But that's clearly not the case. We got a 0 and we have a 10. And we have an 8. They're not around 7. They're quite quite a lot dis, dis, dispersed, while spread out. Which is exactly why we soon which is exactly why we simply do not add up the deviations. The next question that comes to mind is this. Well if that's your concern, if that's your concern, then why not take the absolute value of it? That will solve the problem. The problem here was that the negative values were killing the positive values and we're getting big fat zero. Well, wow, now we won't get big fat zero. Now we'll get 14 if you take the absolute value and add up the absolute value and divide the number of observation. And now you will have 14 over 5. Why not simply do this? Why don't we use this method to calculate standard deviation? There is a reason for that as well. And the reason for that is, listen very carefully, the reason for that is this. You see? When we simply add up, when we simply add up seven and a zero and a one and a, let's, uh, uh, and three, let's just stop at that. Think of this as seven ones, seven ones, zero ones, one one, and three one. This is a weighted average, and we're going to divide that by four ones. You see, because there are four observations. This has a weight of seven. This has a weight of zero. This has a weight of one. This has a weight of three. The reason we do not simply take the absolute value, and the reason we square them. The reason that we square them is because by squaring them, by squaring them, we assign much greater weight, much greater weight to an observation that is too far away from the mean. If something is too far away from the mean, that is significant. It has a information in it. Why is this, ob this observation zero where the average is seven? The average is seven, but this guy, in other words, we gave, ex we gave a test to five students. Five students take took an exam. The, the most that you could get was 10. 10 was a perfect score. It turns out that five out of five students, two of the students scored 10. 10 out of 10, perfect score. And one student simply bombed it. He has a zero. That's a big disparity. We need to bring it out. The, the score of zero is seven points away from the mean. That's a huge disparity. It has to be brought out. It, had, it has to be given more significance. And the reason, and the way we do that is by squaring the quantity. So all of a sudden now, this does not count as seven ones. It has a weight of 49. This has a weight of nine. This only has a weight of one because it's just, it's very close to the mean. Do you understand? That's why we square the deviations. Yes. Instead of, if I try to square, there we go, if I can do the proper job of it, there we go. We don't do this. This is, this is not right. We do not take, the average of the absolute deviations. We do not take the average of the absolute deviations. We take the average of the sum of this. We take the average of the squared deviation. We're going to calculate the mean of the squared deviation. Right here. These are the squared deviation. We're going to take their mean. In order to figure out their mean, first we have to figure out their sum. And this is how we write it. The sum, this is Greek letter sigma, sum of the squared deviation. These are the squared deviation. We're going to take their sum. 
Let's do it together. 9 plus 9 is 18. 18 plus 1 is 19. Let's pretend it's 20. Let's pretend it's 20. 49 plus 20 would have been 59, 69, so it's going to be 68. 68. And now we divide by number of observation. We have five observation here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There we go. And that is what we need. Calculate the mean of the square deviation. We just did that. Mean of the square deviation in this case is 68 over 5, right here. 68 over 5. And finally, the last step, take the square root of it. Take the square root of this quantity right here. I'm just going to say it, and by it I mean this quantity right here. And that's your standard deviation. That's it. We are done. So the standard deviation, standard deviation is simply equal to square root of this quantity right here. The sum of the square deviation divided by the number of observation, in other words, the average of the square deviation. Once we have the average of the square deviation, we just take the square root of it and we are done. So in this case here, in our case, is simply the square root, it is simply the square root of 68.5. 68.5, and there is not much we can do with it. We're not going to sit here and try to calculate it by hand. 68.5, you take the square root of it, and it comes out to be, well, if you wanted to get some idea as to what it is, if you uh, what it is 68 divided by 5, if you want to get some idea, we could actually multiply top and bottom by 2. And if we do that, 68 times 2, 60 times 2 is 120, and 8 times 2 is 16, so 120 plus 16 is going to be 136. So it's well, actually 136. And bottom is 5 times 2, which is 10. And now we can see that 136 divided by 10 is the same as the square root of 13.6. And it still doesn't help us much. You know, we, 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 there's no way we can figure it out. Well, there is a way we can figure it out by hand, but it will take you forever. 13.6, you just pick up your calculator and figure it out. Do you understand? We know we know the square root of 16 is 4. Listen carefully, if, if you want to get some sense of it. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 13.6 is not going to be 4.9. I doubt very much if it's going to be 4.8. Let's try 4.7. Oh, not 4.7, rather 3.7. Let's try it on the side here, 3.7. 37 times 37. Very quickly, okay? I'm just curious. 7 7s are 49. 9, carry 4. 7 3s are 21 plus 4 is 25. Hold the unit digit. 7 3s are 21. 1, carry 2. 3 3s are 9 plus 2 is 11. 9, 6, 13, there you go. So, in other words, in other words, 37 times 37 is 1369, which means 3.7 times 3.7 is 13.69. Well, there you go, 13.69 is very close to 13.6. I would say it's approximately 3.7. Or you can do it in the calculator if you like. That's all. That was the end of it. That's the standard deviation. Simple and quick. One more time, a quick summary of the five steps. The very first thing we need to do, step number one, we calculate the mean of the observation. We calculate the mean of the observation. Once we have the mean, we, we figure out the deviations from the mean of each of the observations. That's the step number two. Calculate the deviations from the mean. Step number three, square them. Square the deviations. Step number four, once you have the square of the deviation, we add them up. We add them up, 68, and we figure out the average of the square deviation. By dividing by number of observation, we are taking the average of the square deviation. That's step number four. And finally, once we have that, we take the square root of the quantity. In, in, in essence, undoing what we had done here by squaring the observations, we undo it by taking the square root of it, 3.7. The last question that comes to our mind is that, now that we have this figure of 3.7, what does it actually tell us? What is the meaning of it? What does it tell us? Well, we have it. We know how to calculate it. But do we understand what it is and, 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 and what kind of information it carries? Answer to that question we'll have tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll discuss what is known as normal distributions. Once we, have the, once we understand the normal distribution, we'll understand what standard deviation actually tells us. Standard deviation is actually a very powerful piece of information. Very powerful piece of information. I'm not going to go through it right now. I was about, I was tempted, but I'm not going to do it. We'll do it tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow we'll talk about uh, normal distribution and it's going to be a little bit of a long video but that's what we'll do tomorrow okay bye now